Oh. Noah, this is going to be good. That's right. This is sure going to be good. I'm going to give it a couple of seconds to let some people trickle in. I hope people trickle in. The reason I'm doing this live and the reason I don't have this all done up is because I suppose I heard a rumor. But you know what they say? Where there's smoke, there's fire. You guys can hear me, right? I don't just have one source. I don't have to have two sources, but I have three separate sources on this topic. It doesn't look very good for the individual. It doesn't look very good for CrossFit. And I do want to add, if you are here in 30 minutes, Pedro, Coffee Pots and Wads will be going live. I guess it's 31 minutes on his platform. He's doing the around the whiteboard. Pump that thing up. Kate, yes, three makes it real, right. I did one of these last year where there was a pretty big topic that was brought up, and it was uh, Sasha Nieves, and there was a glitch, and you're not allowed to edit things together, right? And it was the Watch the Oats thing. I, I went live, and I talked about that. <clears throat> this is going to be pretty big. This is about. Uh, this is not about Tudor. 24.2 is the workout. 24.2, everyone knows. The row, the double unders, the deadlifts. Everyone knows that it was a very transition heavy workout. Everyone knows that Tuta Magda, hey, this is what the uh, coffee pods and the wide shows to be about. Everyone knows Tudor Magda went over a thousand reps. Everyone knows that at this point, Tudor Magda is not who we're talking about. If you saw Tudor Magda completing double unders on the Instagram post that he put up, you might be thinking that, oh, okay, I just need to speed up my double unders. Maybe I've got to get one of those Evo ropes. The athlete that we're going to be talking about is, I'll pull this up, share leaderboards, boom, Emily Claw. Now, call me an idiot, but I don't know who Emily Claw is. I do know the other athletes up here. I guess I don't know Hannah either, but Hannah is also a Swedish athlete. Uh, one of my three sources says that they know Hannah, and this score has been videoed. This score is legitimate, 925 reps. This score goes right up against some of the most fit men in the world's scores, which is impressive. This for this score, Hannah's score, is five reps short of Jason Hopper versus Taylor Self. And you guys saw those guys go into war. That score is incredibly impressive. And that score is number two in the world. This score is a video, 31-year-old athlete Hannah Carlson. What I'm hearing from three sources now is that Emily Claw does not have a video. Emily Claw, Sweden, 27 years old, CrossFit Walleye. I'm hearing that Emily Claw didn't really realize how good of a score 926 was when the score was input. I'm hearing Emily Claw needed to video the workout. Emily Claw redid the workout for video submission and was about a round short. Please think about that for a minute. If I do Fran... And I'm like, yeah, I got like a 205 for end time. I believe I actually have something like that post on my YouTube. Maybe it was 211. But in no world is that 230. And there isn't any world where I do a two, 210 for end. And unless I've taken a year off and consumed copious amounts of McDonald's and let myself go, then I'm going to add or subtract 10% from my score. So here's the thing. And I don't know how many times I'm going to need to say this. Emily Claw is at the top of the leaderboard. You don't need to have a video icon here because it's confirmed by Mia, who is a pretty big figure over there in uh, the Sweden space, uh, has been to the games multiple times herself. And that in and of itself is a topic of discussion as well. Mia is the one who I guess is the one who looked at this. CrossFit is, as of right now, from what I'm hearing, going to allow this. CrossFit is going to say, Emily Claw, your score is good. Emily Claw, we know you don't have a video for your score. Emily Claw, we're not going to give you the $2,024. And before anyone gets all crazy about this, I've given Emily a chance to respond. I asked her. I said, and I'll pull that up too. It's actually the thumbnail for this video. Share entire screen. Boom. There you go. I'm hearing that CrossFit has accepted your winning score. Congrats. Although you do not have a video. Can you confirm this? Thank you. So no, I don't have direct confirmation from Emily herself, but I have confirmation from a couple of people over in Sweden 
I've got uh, a source who kind of hears a whole bunch of stuff that's confirming it as well. And the biggest issue with this is the fact that uh, how can CrossFit accept a score without a video? It's like, it's like the deadlift thing that I put out yesterday. How, how, how can everybody in the world not follow the deadlift standard and then expect anybody to follow the deadlift standard? Uh, this, this Someone in here wrote something about Oliver Queen. Uh, there you go. Emily Flaw sounds a lot like Oliver Queen. Yeah, that's not me. I wish it was me. That'd be sick if that was me. But it's not me. This is a legitimate person. If, if I go back to that athlete profile, I can pull her up. And uh, it doesn't look like she's ever competed in the semifinal, the quarterfinal, or any of that. But here I got I got her profile up, and I hope I didn't just shut off StreamYard because that would be a mess. All right, one man team, small team, small team. Here we go. Emily Flaw. Here she is, CrossFit Walleye, currently sitting in 96th in the world. She 2022 she finished in 169th, 1,393 in the year previous. She's fit, but she's never gone to the quarterfinals. She's never been to the games, and I guess that isn't necessarily something that you need to have under your belt in order to get a worldwide winning score. But when you're going to beat somebody like Laura Horvath on a workout like this, all of a sudden you're thinking, huh, she did do it at an affiliate, right? Here's the thing about this workout, guys. And here's a, here's something that can happen. I'm also not saying that I've heard this. You're doing 10 rounds of a workout. It's very easy to say, oh, you got 10 rounds plus 20, 260 meters on the rower. Yeah, I just... I, th I, th I thought I tallied it right. Tech, an tech another 90 round reps on that workout. You bet. Froggy Will, you bet. Get that job. Get it, Will. They'll be dumb not to hire you. And if they don't hire you, that's their fault. Do you, do you guys understand what I'm saying? <clears throat> so the biggest things right here, if you're just chiming in, is there's an athlete on the women's side who won the workout worldwide, 24.2. That athlete... From a couple of sources, three sources, and counting at this moment in time, one, two, three, does not have a video of this workout. When you win the workout worldwide, you need to have a video. So uh, when Colton Burton's wins with the first week of the 24.1, and then that, who's the other chick that won 24.1? It was some High Rocks chick, who's apparently very impressive. They both submit videos because if you want to get paid and you want to remain at the top of the leaderboard, you have to submit a video, Right. Get about abide by the movement standards. How do you know if you even did the right number of rounds if you don't have a video? How is it verified? Because Kate's okay, got it. Three makes it real. Three sources makes it real. Here's what I'm hearing, Travis. I'm hearing that she will not be DQ'd. I'm hearing that she's not going to be paid because when you when you win an open workout, it was two thousand and twenty four dollars. The year is the amount of money that you win for winning a worldwide workout, and I hear that she will not be DQ'd. And the biggest thing that I'm hearing, guys, on top of the fact that she's not going to be DQ'd, is that she does the workout on Friday. Boom! Crazy score. Scores on the leaderboard. Oh, man. I might win. Oh, oh man. Oh, man. I, I might win. Oh, crap. Laura Horvath, 9-11. I beat her by 15 reps. 150 meters on the rower. That's like 30 seconds I beat Laura Horvath by on this workout. Oh, my God. What am I going to do? I got to redo the workout. I got to video it. I might win. What are they going to do when I ask? All right, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to record it. One round less. One round less. And Kate, here's the thing. Are they going to give the money to number two? They damn well should. But it's not. it doesn't just stop there. They shouldn't just give the money to number two, who I'm hearing has a video. They should take number one off the leaderboard. Just like they should remove everybody's freaking deadlift workout because no one did the freaking workout right. Joe Shalasi was in my video yesterday. He's a very good dude. You are correct. I love me some Joe Shalasi. This is it. This is it all over again, Cave. She had the capacity to give her friends the ability to vouch for her. This is this is the Brooke Wells doing handstand push up against the wall. But the difference is, at least Brooke Wells had a video. There's no video. It doesn't matter if she did it in an affiliate. This is, this is another thing. Yeah, the CrossFit's like hounding for money every corner they can do it from. It's like, oh, well. So, yeah, guys, this is all I want really want to talk about. Short video. There's 400 of you watching. Does everybody understand how, in, how insane this is? It's like 
All right, Andrew, I'm going to go do Murph. All right, I did Murph in 40 minutes. I pat myself on the back. Hey, Andrew, what's your Murph time? 40 minutes. Oh, you know, I don't believe that. That's a really good Murph time. And then I'm like, yeah, sure. I'll show you how to do Murph. And then it takes me 45 minutes. You're like, that's five minutes slower. What's wrong with you? Were, were you drinking all night? Did you did you not sleep yesterday? Are you in? Are you? Are, do, but but it's not even like that. It's like I said, I had a 30 minute Murph world record. Like we know Hunter McIntyre can't even do that. We know that nobody at the CrossFit Games in 2015, 2016 did Murph in 30 minutes. And then all of a sudden it takes me 38 minutes. Why, why didn't you just do the same thing you did the other day? It's not like there was a strategy issue. So, so, so when Emily Claude does this workout and beats, how many men did she beat on this workout? That's the thing, guys. It, the, the men and the women are on no level playing field when it comes to this thing. It's why when Laura Horvath puts up a score of 911 reps, it's so freaking impressive. So I'm going to pull up the leaderboard over here. And I'm going to show you that the chicks on this workout – uh, Grace Walton, we've seen her do some very impressive things. That's a very believable score. Not only is it believable, she has a freaking video. Ariel Lowen, same deal. I hear she's repeating the workout 10,000 times in order to get those scores. Laura Horvath, crazy on the rower. Caitlin Van Zeel, very good capacity. Oh, yeah, we, we believe all these things. There's Tia Toomey. We know that we couldn't see her deadlifts because she was facing the wrong way, but we know that she has, at least has a video. We know that she at least did the right number of rounds. Elena Savage, Christine Bishop, all these people. We get it, Right. 926 reps, guys. This isn't just something that CrossFit can say, oh, well, we're just going to leave you up there. And uh, yeah, nice job. You, you won the workout. When, when we flip over to the men's side and we uh, filter these things and we go to the fourth page, I bet, yep, this, yep, look at all these people she's going to beat. She beat Jordan Troyan. She beat Luis Oscar Mora, who was fifth place on the first workout. And that dude's built like a brick shit house. Uh, who else did she beat of the men that I can just like? Anola Kai, Jeremy Vigneault. Uh, Kaylee and Souza, who was a CrossFit Games athlete last year. These are just people I'm picking out of the hat. Maury, it's five big. She beat freaking Victor Huffer on this first workout. She's beaten all these people. Uh, uh, the, the, who else can I pull? It? Drew Wayman, he's a monster. Austin Hatfield, he's a monster. He won the Crash Crucible. These are all men that this person without a leaderboard beat. Angela DeChico, Ethan Helbig. These people are nuts. These are all men. Daniel Coots. Anyone else? Jason Carroll? Uh, she didn't beat Jason Carroll. All right. She did not beat Tom Hanks. You guys know that guy looks like Tom Hanks? <sighs> Angry Hiller, let's go. CrossFit HQ. All right. Typical CrossFitism. Give Grace Walton some credit. Yeah, Grace Walton's crazy. She was on a show the other day that I was on with Sevan. Plot twist. I'm actually talking about myself, guys. You got me. I'm Emily Claw. You got me. Uh, I, I did want to read through a couple of these messages, my sources, if you will. Here's the thing about the day in the internet, guys. It's like, if this is true, did they really think that this was a good idea? How, how could you have thought that this was a good I wonder if she's going to message me back now. Someone should uh, tell Emily Claw to message me back while we're on the show. If anybody has access to Emily, say, hey, Hiller messaged you. He wants to talk to you. And if this isn't true, I would like to do everything I can to try to mitigate the fact that you didn't do the right. I'm also hearing, guys, that there was conversation going on over there where she was, like, iffy about it. And then the people over there were like, yeah, you totally did it. You did it. Nice job. It's like, talk about the wrong chain of events. It's the wrong feedback loop. Hi, a Swedish athlete that has completed almost 11 rounds of 24.2, but no video. She redid it on Monday, but only nine made nine rounds plus the row. I'm not bringing this up because, as I've brought up in the past, I don't out my sources. Like Mr. Frank, CrossFit Affiliate Collective, Frank would have really liked me to do out my freaking sources. Are you out of your freaking mind? Uh, she redid it on Monday, but she only made nine rounds plus the row. So that that's where one of the sources that I'm getting is telling me that they got one round less. I added five minutes to my Murph time. How did you do that? I had 30 seconds to my Fran time. It's like, you can't do that. Your best mile is six minutes. You don't just run a 640 mile. You don't do it. It doesn't happen. Uh, she put a famous Swedish athlete as her judge, but she only judged her on Monday when she retested it. So the question is, if Mia, who is the person who is Mia Hesketh, didn't even judge her for the 926, according to this source. Her score has been accepted in form I've heard. She's gotten the mail from CrossFit saying, congratulations on your win. Uh, da, 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 da. 
What else do we got here? Here's the biggest thing. Can you really win a workout without a video proving that you did all the reps? That is a door that we don't want to open. And I think that I've kind of hammered that thing. And how can CrossFit let this happen? And then I have another source here saying that uh, when are you doing the vi workout? When are you doing it to get it on video? The pace of the claim score. Uh, there's a whole bunch of excuses, including the row pace being completely different, not adding up the setup and the transitions, not really aligning with somebody who could have ever had gotten that score in the first place. And that makes sense considering the transitions. What do you think guys? This is, uh, this is, this, this is and then here's the reason that I do this. It's because I'm the only one who can do this. Like if I get information telling me something on the contrary, I'll go live again. I'll go, okay, guys, remember that chick Emily Claw? Apparently, she can do it. Apparently, but uh, I don't know if this is one of my gun-in-my-head situations because I wouldn't have done this video like this, but this is a situation where I would probably, I'm probably 85, 90% sure that this is an illegitimate score that CrossFit's letting go through the cracks. Looks pretty obvious to me, right? Emily Claw went to Hogwarts. I don't know about that, Braylon. Yeah, that's how we do it in my gym and everyday people. Everyone judges the person and then the gym owner approves all their scores. Yeah, that's how everyone else does it. But this is not everyone else. Like, I was giving Tia crap for putting the video camera and then it's like shooting up at the butt from the wrong angle and you can't tell the hip extension of Tia. That, that's Tia. And we know that CrossFit's not going to do anything to Tia, which is ridiculous that I even have to make that claim because they should. They should say, we can't tell if you're extending your hips. It doesn't matter if the open doesn't matter because when people see this, they're going to start making a mockery of it. And when people see this, they're going to start making a mockery of it. I'm looking up there. I got to look at the camera. I'm looking at my, I'm looking at the freaking computer. I look at the camera. All of a sudden, what's going to happen is, oh, Emily Claw. Yeah, remember that one time where she had the best score ever? And even then, CrossFit let it slide. Even then, that's number one. If they can do it for number one, they can certainly do it for number two, five. Uh, go look up McLovin on the leaderboard, guys. McLovin, you know, the dude with the freaking Hawaiian thing from Superbad. Everyone knows who McLovin is, right? Oh, well, that's good. Mia was missing in action. If it takes me, someone like me doing something like this in order to get that person's name off of the leaderboard, that's an issue in and of itself. Because Talking Lee Fitness isn't going to do this. I bet that uh, somebody like the Barbell Spin might do something like this. But they talk about it. Sevon would totally do something like this. Probably not in like this exact fashion. But uh, there aren't very many. Morning Chalk up wouldn't do something like this. Rumors circulating that athlete at the top of the leaderboard didn't actually do the workout. What ends up happening is no one knows. Go ahead and look up McLovin. Enjoy yourselves looking up McLovin. Okay. I'm also doing the math. Herculean paces on the row. Okay. Yeah, those are closed sources. And then I have an outside source who has some pretty good information on that as well. <laughs> Dave Castro just called and he wants me to check. He wants you to check your tone. It's weird that Emily would keep her score and why even create the controversy? Well, what I'm hearing is there was like this aura about the situation when it would be addressed. And it was almost like everyone around her was like, you did it! Good job! You go, girl! And then eventually, like, the tone that Emily had had changed around. Like, oh, yeah, I did do it. I'll go ahead. And that's, uh, that's singular sourced. Multiple sources, three sources. This is where... Uh... <laughs> okay. Tone checked. Awesome to hear you doing this. Say something. All right. Say something to say positive. All right, everyone's going to go chime in to Pedro, Coffee Pods and Wads. I'm going to go show you what that looks like real quick. Here's the thing, guys. I, I, I really like to draw attention to things that I think need. That's why I started the YouTube channel. I started the YouTube channel so that it's 
500 people watching this. That's freaking nuts. Thank you for being here. But I start the YouTube channel so that I can draw attention to things that I think need to be talked about. This is one of them. This thing can't go through the cracks. It can't just be a thing if, it's, if it is true. And then speaking of attention, if everybody could go on over to this afterwards and just freaking blow it up with bats in the comment section, that would be sick. It's cool. It's like, uh, you know, you know, when that dude, uh, what's his name? Joey Swole says something about somebody and then they all filter over or the goob guy. I think it's cool when that sort of stuff happens. So pretty soon it's going to be Brian friend. It's going to be Kiefer. Who's that guy? I don't know who that guy is. I should know who that guy is. Now I look like a dummy. He's going live in 10 minutes. Train to think tank. That's not Max Al Hodge. Oh, that's a good question. That'd be one way to even tell. The concept two does store previous rows, so they need to go into that row or and ideally they do set the date and time. Yeah, Kiefer's a good dude. I liked him better with blonde hair. Not that he should really care. Um all right, so one last time. I'm gonna break down the entire situation for people who are just chiming in. 528 people, a hundred of which probably have no idea what's going on right here. Step number one. I open up Instagram. Sorry, I got a text message. Step number one. I'm hearing that there's no video for the number one score on the women's leaderboard. Okay. I'm hearing doesn't mean that that means anything. And I'm like, all right, well, that would be crazy. That can't slide. Uh, similar source says something along the lines of apparently CrossFit's just not going to pay this person, but they're going to leave their score at the top of the leaderboard. I'm like, oh, damn. <laughs> That's not good. <laughs> And then I go onto my Instagram DMs and I start clicking around a little bit. And I've got some, some European correspondence and I'm not talking about Pedro. Mm -mm. No, I'm talking about somebody else here. A European correspondents say, hey, dude, they don't know each other. My, my, my sources don't know each other, which makes them stronger sources when they both say the same things. Emily Claw, the chick at the top of the leaderboard that I'm about to show you, that chick don't got a video. And uh, when I just read you guys via my direct messages from another source said that Mia Hesketh, who is an extremely fit individual, very strong. I think she can snatch 200 pounds. Reputable source did not judge this score. So what ended up happening for those of you following is that Emily did this workout on Friday, put the score in. Maybe it was Thursday, maybe it was Friday, but it was early on in the submission window deadline. She did the workout, put the score in. And then started to realize that she was going to win. And she goes, oh, God, I don't have a video. Oh, God, I don't have a video. Now, there was a judge there. It was not Mia, which is an issue because if Mia is not connected to this score and that score was done on Thursday or Friday, this shouldn't be here. Mia judged the redo, which was done on Sunday or Monday, a couple of days later. And Emily, the athlete being judged by Mia at this point, did not get anywhere near 10 rounds. And the word on the street is from two sources that she was about a round short which means that she has the capacity, one second, this is important, the capacity, the capacity to do nine rounds and change, but not 10 rounds and change. I did the whole thing where I went through all the men, freaking put it to Laura Horvath, beat Laura Horvath by 30 seconds on a workout where she's rowing and slipping around. And the big thing, guys, is that also from what I'm hearing, If you do Diane, has everyone seen Dan Bailey do Diane? Deadlifts and handstand push-ups, right? Dan Bailey says, I do Diane in a minute and a half, and it might even be faster. It's something ridiculously fast, and they did it in the 2012 regional. Uh, I guess I still have you guys for seven minutes, so I might as well bring this up. Dan Bailey, Diane. Now, the dude does strict handstand push-ups because the only way that you're going to go that fast is by push-ups, and then you also know that that dude is going to transition like a bat out of hell. Who's seen this video? Is this 2012? Was I right about that? This is from 11 years ago, 2012. Look at that. That's my autism kicking. Take your anchor. All right, here's Dan Bailey. Look at that. Oh, look, head's been in front of the bar for years. All right, and then look at him run to the wall. All right, see how he runs but over there as fast as he can, and see how he's also doing strict handstand push-ups. When you do stuff, and I'm pausing it so that they don't get mad at me. Clicker. What was his final time on this? Is it a minute and a half? Here's what I'm going to bet. I'm betting that he's finishing up his final 15 here. Didn't finish that handstand push-up. That's a no rep. Comes on over. Heads in front of the bar. 
So this has just been a thing forever, I suppose. You got a judge right there. Now watch this. You know that the deadlifts are going to be all unbroken. You know that he's got to run to the wall. You know that the handstand push-ups have to be unbroken. This is what you know has to happen in order for you to get a Diane time of about a minute and 30 whatever seconds, 136. You have to go unbroken on the wall. You have to go unbroken on the deadlift. You probably have to do the handstand push-up straight because Kipping handstand push-ups took too long. So when you hear Dan Bailey goes 135 at the regionals in 2012, you know those things happened. And the thing that I'm going to try to draw a line to right here is that Emily Claw, in order to get that score, she's got to be doing this. Row, row, row your boat. Deadlift, deadlift, deadlift. Double under, double under, double under. And you have to be moving that quick. It's not like you just lose the ability to transition quickly. And she lost it. <sighs> Make love in his 42 years old according to his fake ID. Do you feel old yet? 32. I'm 32. Taylor, why don't you just ask Savan to let Dave know that there's an issue and that's it? Well, because then I wouldn't get 563 viewers looking at the issue that's at hand. Completely goes against everything that I stand for. Everybody has to know all at once. I've known for three hours longer than any of you have, and that ain't fair to you guys. <laughs> and then I wouldn't be able to say, hey, guys, I'm leaving, and I need you guys to go filter on over to Coffee Pods and Wads. Does everybody get it? Dan Bailey does Diane in. We see it. We see what happened here. Now, here's what I – you guys don't want to really know what I think happened. Because if it isn't for if it isn't for that, <clears throat> the transition piece, if it isn't for the fact that the round is wrong, it'd have to be all about movement standards. Now, I don't think that that is the case. I think that it was off by a round. I think that the score is input wrong from the get-go. I think that, uh, that there's no world where this happens, but it's a potential that everything was done a little bit more crisp. And when you do things a little bit more crisp, you're going to move slower such as Dan Bailey on this workout. If he did the deadlift standard to the standards that we talked about yesterday in the video, he doesn't finish that workout in 135, 136. He finishes in maybe 150, which is slower, but we know why it happened because we knew that everyone was watching. We knew that there was a standard being upheld. We knew that maybe, although his arms are huge and he's doing handstand push-ups and they're massive, but like that's not locked out, but that is. And when you do that rep after rep after rep, on a workout like that, it adds up to the tune of maybe 15 seconds on a minute and a half workout. What was a minute and a half workout? How is Roger Wadapalooza? How is it that Roger Wadapalooza can correct and fix things, but HQ can't? Rogue has an extremely stingy review process, and I would say likely the best. Well, it's kind of annoying that you have to weigh all of your bumper plates. There's no messing around over there. Um, and I don't really, I'm not in the mood to throw a whole bunch of mud at HQ lately, but Rogue and Wadapalooza, they listen to outside sources quite a bit. Uh, they, they actually really like them. Uh, they hear what's going on and they implement. And I know that the, the people who do the judging over there are not the same that do the judging. Who does the judging at CrossFit? Hmm. You're really only 32? Get out. Come on. Yeah. I heard uh, testosterone makes you appear older. So that could be it. That's cool. Here's the thing, guys. Uh, let's see if Emily, before we get off, let's see if Emily Claw has responded. She has not. Either it's sleep time over in Sweden or my reach isn't quite as strong as I thought that it was. <laughs> All right, last thing I want to bring up. How'd you guys like that Instagram post that I put up today? I'll hold that up, and then I will let you guys bounce this Instagram post. I thought this was funny. Got this on March 13th. I left that in, right? March 13th, you're in for the open. And then the next page, before your first open workout on February 29th. What? <laughs> Like, you can't even make this stuff up. Why did I get this email on the 13th? Is this one over some people's heads? It's got nothing to do with whether or not I am allowed to be in the open. It's got to do with the fact that this is in my e email box days late. Freaking nuts, isn't it? 
Even after they booted me. Yeah, even after they booted me. Makes absolutely no sense. She is posting. Uh... <laughs> okay. Oh, well. All right, guys. Here's the thing. You're going to all ideally go on over to Coffee Pods and Wads. There are 566 people watching. I want an 80%, I don't know, conversion. Thank you for joining. I will keep you guys all posted the best I can on the Emily Claw situation. And Riller, out.